<laughs> Alright, welcome everybody. Uh, yeah, it appears... So, I have to explain, Trash Man. Um, I may have been calling you Josh for a while now. Uh, I call you that because I have a friend in another server called Trash Panda King. And I thought you were just a rebrand. <laughs> I thought you were him rebranding his name. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Welcome to the stream, man. Thank you so much for being here and for understanding my confusing you with somebody entirely different. Um, okay, so today we are in Microsoft Flight and we are going from uh, Bucharest to Warsaw. <laughs> Oh, if you know that, so, so I, okay, now I know who you are. So now I, now I have everyone straight. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, I've already done the, um, the little bit of pre-flight of getting the, the internal power turned on so that I could make Microsoft Flight connect the jetways. And, um, let me show you why. Um, I wanted to do that because I wanted to make sure that I could show you guys this. This is the the intense quality that a Sobo gives us. This is where the the plane started. I did not move the plane. You can see it's actually on the line, but the jetway goes through the wing. It's connected to the back of the plane. It um, it's no do good. Um, so we've had some bad luck with the last two airports we've been to, but we're going to jump in the cockpit. It, tell you what, uh, I was, I was actually anticipating a little more time passing. Let's brighten that up a little bit by making it a little bit further in the day. So you can see that jetway there is connected to the back of the plane. It's impacting the wing here. So, um, and this is all default. And I'm now having trouble actually controlling the camera. So that should be connected like up here. Um, this should be swung out further, probably anchored right about there. And then the jetway there should be connected up here to the front of the, the front hatch. Uh, no, thank God this is not one of the handcrafted airports. So the pirate radio thing is because... So, there was recently in the United States where I live, uh, legislation passed that gave everybody $600 for... to live on for COVID. Um... I'm not going to speak to the politics of it, but the um, the way that we do things here in America is we try to shove everything we can into one bill. I think we can all agree that's probably a pretty bad idea. So, um, essentially, one of the things that was included in it is uh, consequences. It, it upgraded the uh, consequences for... Uh, the classification for breaking copyright law, which technically speaking, they phrased it such, not that it was a breach of copyright law, but they phrased it as um, the broadcast of copyrighted content. Now, technically speaking, games are copyrighted. So, technically speaking, they have increased, they, they have provided and uh, consequences for streaming and in, increased the consequences for uh, people that are distributing copyrighted content to be a felony. Now, it's not designed to catch streamers. No, I don't live in Canada. My wife lives in Canada. Um, at least for now. Um, I live in the central United States. Um, so I am subject to that law and technically speaking, it makes streaming any copyrighted content without express permission a felony. 
Um, it's not meant to catch us. They specifically tried to word it as best they could to avoid catching us. But um, it doesn't change the fact that the way that they did word it, it is possible for them to come after us. So I had to make some hard decisions as a streamer and whether or not I wanted to run the risk of getting caught in that net unintentionally. And I decided that it was worth it to me to continue to provide this stream for people, especially during this time where people need a break. You're stuck in the hellhole that is Florida. Jesus. I'm... I'm sorry, if there is something America has done that is stupid, it happened in Florida. It came out of Florida. That's 100% of the time. I, I cannot begin to explain. Um, Alright, so I'm going to jump into the cockpit and let's get this thing started rolling, shall we? Uh, we need to make sure that our pumps are all off. Uh, fuel, we need to load. Okay, so I need to grab this real quick. I won't be able to see chat for just a few seconds here while I'm setting up our fuel. Um, so I need weight in kilograms. And we need a total of 7323. Close enough. All right, and then we need for our payload. We need 176 passengers. It doesn't specify by passenger, so our total takeoff weight should be 69.3 metric tons. Close enough. Cool. All right, pop this back down so I can see chat. Uh, let's see, so fuel is loaded. Uh, let's zoom that in so we don't have that weird fisheye effect. Look up any date along with Florida Man. It shows some dumbass thing somebody did. Exactly, exactly, and it doesn't happen anywhere else. Like, I don't know what it is about Florida that makes people do things. You can almost do it with Texas. But Texas, Texas does it intentionally. Like, Florida, it's always some guy who was high on meth or something. But Florida, Florida, Florida's always, it's high on meth or bath salts or something. And in Texas, it was the plan. They blew something up. That was the plan. California has its own special variation of that. Is it a specific part of, of California that does that? All right, so we're going to test the AP fire system. Ooh, no, no, no. Close that. I'm testing. Testing. There we go. Okay. <laughs> When California does something stupid, it's taking this example for everyone else to try. Oh, man. All right, so APU fire test is passed. We're going to hit APU uh, master start. And we're going to wait for flap open to appear. Meanwhile, let's set up our brightness here. Cockpit lights, McDo's, everything should be mostly set up. All right, flap open message. So let's go ahead and start the APU. What is like the dumbass comedian that does the dumbest stuff while everyone looks in horror? And then California is the one that says, hey, that looks like a good idea. I think I could get it right. All right, uh, flap lever, match ecam, flaps are retracted, good, speed brake retracted, uh, probe and window heat we don't need unless it's like completely covered in ice, uh, if you bleed on when it becomes available, which is not yet. 
All right, air conditioner panel should show no white. Cross bleed should be set to auto. Air conditioner temperatures. Wait, did I just hear that click over? Are we on? No. All right, let's set up our air conditioners. All right, generator one and two fault light should be on. Electrical panel should have all of the lights off except for the exterior power because we are still on the umbilical. And all right, now we can take APU bleed on, uh, external power off, and then no other lights should be on. Ventilation panel, no lights should be on. That's our preliminary pre-flight procedure complete. Now we can turn on Adirs on bat. And then once that fades, IRS2. This is just oddly satisfying to see and make sure the plane won't crash and burn. See, if I do it now, I don't have to do it when I'm flying. Which is a lot simpler, I think, than waiting until you're falling to your death to try and avoid it. Um, Alright, so we need to turn on strobe lights to auto wing lights. Avin logo. We need to seat belts. No smoking light. Arm the... Uh, Emergency exit lights. Landing elevation should be set to auto. This part is really important, by the way. If you don't do this, if you have it set somewhere weird, um, everybody passes out at 10,000 feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is Winter Katan. I'm, I'm doing an entire stream. The, the entire playlist today is all Winter Katan. Um, I've been watching them build the Marble Machine X for uh, weeks now, and I fucking love it. Um, like, it's it's just inspired me a lot. And they've offered uh, all of their build tracks, all of their, um, their performance at Steel Clock. Um... Everything that they've done essentially is all royalty free. You can you can stream it. They have a, an, a a sync license. All you have to do is make sure that you put something up that identifies what it's from. Considering how the tracks have to be engineered, I'm actually surprised there's more than one. That's actually something that the Marble Machine X that they are currently developing is specifically designed to disabuse. Is the, is the idea that a Marble Machine can only play one song? The whole point is that there's this there, there's this programming wheel, and it's got all these notches that you slide slide little uh, magnets into, and the magnets hit the registrators. The registrator drops a marble, so you change that programming pin to another position, and it will play the same note, different note, same time, different time. So you can completely program the song without like changing the the the, the machine itself. Uh, okay, so landing elevation and pack flow looks like normal, which is good. Uh, fuel pumps can all come on. Engine one and two fire test. Radios are already on. Mcdo should mostly be set. Let's look here. Uh, okay, today's cost index. I do need to look at a few things. The original was literally like a pian like a player piano scroll made out of Lego bricks. Yes and no. Um, it was legitimately like literally made out of Lego bricks, but it was programmable. He just only performed the one song because it was not. It's, it was not engineered tightly enough to be able to run even that one song 
without massive numbers of failures. He had to record that, I think he said like a hundred times, just to get it through one time clear. I have an unhealthy addiction to speedrunning 15 year old games. I know that feeling. Uh, I, I don't actually speedrun, but I'm trying to learn how to speedrun. Um, I used to be really fast with Mega Man X. Uh, and I'm having to reestablish all of those abilities. Alright, so our cost index today is going to be 53. Passengers on board is 176, and it's not going to accept that because it's not modeled, I guess. Uh, and then our top climb is going to be 360. Let me request, nope. I'm not going to worry about it then. I'm not going to worry about anything that it's not going to be able to automate for me because this isn't really much of a simulator. It's more of a game. So, like, I do all of this stuff by realistic, you know, methods in uh, X-Plane because it is well enough modeled that I can. Um, however, here I just estimate... <laughs> Uh, and then our fuel should be seven points. All right. V one one three six. V two V rotate one three seven and V two one four one. We're gonna do flaps one slash. Up zero point zero, or no, it's not gonna want up. It just went zero point zero. Ah, fuck! Did I get it wrong? Does it want the up? The real plane wants the up. Okay, so that must be something that they updated. Flex temp. We're gonna go sixty six. All right, so that's the McDo configure. All right, here we go. Uh, let me catch up. Mario 64 speedrun. Oh. oh, I was never able to do Mario 64 all that well. I loved it. It was a fun game. But I was not able to, like, point to point it. I just had fun with it. It was too open-ended for me to, to, like, plot a path or anything like that. I've been trying to speedrun X2 and X3. Good luck. X2 is notoriously difficult to speedrun, from what I understand. Um, X3 is fun. I, I had a lot of fun with X3. I think I just wrapped up my X3 series in the YouTube releases. Uh, and a bit of MM4. That I didn't have as much fun with, especially at the end for Zero. There was just no way that I could figure out to combat the head in the lower left-hand corner. I don't know why. Uh, reminds me, I need to go dig out my emulation tools and see if I can play Wing Commander 1 stuff. Jesus. Uh, X2's been going fine, but X3... Really? X3 is the hard one for me. I, I, I would not have predicted this. All right, so McDo's are set. So we are ready for pushback and start. So we need to check our altimeter. Let's see what our weather currently is. Uh, 1013.25. You switch this over, 1013.25. All right. Flight directors should both be on. Speed should be in managed mode, heading managed mode. Altitude should be set to ATC cleared, but I'm just going to go straight up to 36,000 feet. We're not flying online, so I'm not going to worry too much about actual procedures. 
Oh no, Classic Series 4. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, X4. Ooh. Especially on Zero, I had a problem. On X, not that hard. But on Zero, jeez. The, the controls were just not that tight on X4. Not for either character. Anti-skid and nose wheel steering on. Switching panel on normal. Transponder. We're going to set 2103. What? No. No. 2103. Turn our transponder on. Beacon lights on. And we're going to have to... Contact ATC to disconnect the jet plane. Airbus Charlie, Foxtrot X-ray Charlie Delta, could you please disconnect the jet plane from the aircraft? Okay, now that it's swinging away, let's prepare for pushback. I think I just hit the right thing for it. Where now people say X4 is one, if not the best, X game? What? Who said that? Because, um, no. Not even a little bit. Shift B? It's my pushback. Hold on, I gotta check key lines. Ah! Uh. Woo! Shift P. Okay. Ninety percent of all X reviewers say that, and a lot of people agree. They are absolutely wrong. In no world. Can you just fucking push back, please? Oh my god, why are you doing this to me? Photo Penny Ground, Airbus Charlie, Foxtrot X-ray Charlie Delta ready to copy IFR Oh, I hate Microsoft Flight so much. Airbus Charlie, Foxtrot X-ray Charlie Delta cleared to open the airport and file. Take off runway 26 left climb and maintain 12,000 feet. Airbus There it is. Okay, so I have to be in the cockpit, and it has to be left fucking... Okay. I'm gonna turn this off. Yeah, that's that's the ticket. It just makes me lose hope in humanity and the MMX community. True. I turned off my radios! How are you talking to me? My radio is off! Heaven forbid you want to experience that wonderful exterior view while you fly things. Oh no, it's it's worse than that. Oh my god, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna have a fit. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this thing started. Engine selector over to ignition, starting engine two. Go fuck yourself! I will mute you. Do not test me. I have 2,000 pound pumps in And you just got muted.
because I do not give a shit about your ATC. Alright, sorry. Uh, and I have no clue what to use them on. I am still kind of working on um, exactly how those are going to function within the channel. <laughs> yeah, I am done with their shit. I am only prepared to take so much. All right, that's positive start. Engine one, or engine two. Let's start engine one. If you listen real close, you can probably hear that PTU barking. And then we're going to look for... 15%, I think, on N1 rotation. Then we'll be able to turn off APU bleed. Actually, I probably already can. Yeah, let's go ahead and turn off APU bleed. Still leave the engine in ignition mode. Uh, ground spoilers can be armed. We're going to increase our flaps to flaps position one. All right, that's positive start engine two. Engine mode selector to normal. All right, engine... APU master switch off. We should be ready to taxi. Nose wheel lights to taxi mode. I'm gonna real quick, I'm gonna be unable to see chat here uh, for a few minutes because I need to switch to my map. Oh, I'm over there, am I? Okay, so I need to nose left. Cool. All right, parking brake off. Then we're going to put our feet on the pedals. I'm gonna try and apply breakaway thrust. Turn left. Then real quick. I'm going to pause Winter Katan while I get our briefing started. If I can get it to run. Why do you start in full screen? Here we go. Greetings from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. Thank you for choosing to fly Iraq attack this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a few things. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, Statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. Because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first 3 minutes and the last 8 minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now 
look at your seat belt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you okay. lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like seat belt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-on. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately, and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when I get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year, passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being cold. Same goes for spilled-proof coffee in teapots and cups with lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch, when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark and it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20% fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the US. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal and then leave the tray on your table making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. 
All right, and we're back. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, I did spend a couple hours making it. Uh, I do have the Stream Raiders link up. Um, all right, we need to slow down and make our turnaround here. This is called back taxi. Don't want to actually stop. Okay, <laughs> so the salty thing is because um, it's just my personality. I, I, I tend to indulge in what people call being salty. Uh, I bitch a lot. And so for a while, my nickname on various chat mediums was Sodius Maximus because maximum salt. Um, all right, so we're going to stop here. And then let's get this thing in the air, and then I'll finish the story. <laughs> all right, transponder, T-A-R-A. -A. Uh, brake temperatures look good. Engine mode is good. A runway turn off lights. We need to start lighting this bad boy up. All right. Chrono start. Engines to 50%. Stabilized. Flex set. Oh, where's Flex? B1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. feet autopilot on let's reduce throttle to climb all right landing gear is up crown spoilers can be disarmed nose wheel lights can come off runway turn off lights can come off Throttle is at the climb detent. Flaps are retracting in. Three, two, one. Retracted. Engine mode is normal. Anti ice on at minus 10. True air temperature. True at plus three. We're good. I think the trend's out here. Ah! Not mean to do that. Uh, transition altitude here is going to be 4,000 feet. So we're actually coming up on our transition altitude. Sounded like it was chugging. Well, uh, I mean, that's probably the plates on the runway. Um, so, basically, uh, there's, there's natural deformations in the runway itself. And that's probably what you're hearing is the, 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 uh, I'm on standard. The transition altitude is 4,000 feet. We are over 4,000 feet. 
Um, but yeah, no, that's a that's a re realistic. So what you got to remember is that the landing gear in most planes is it's connected to the wing box, so it's it's out really far to the sides, and there's a lot of structural support around there. Um, however, the front landing gear, the nose gear, is directly under the pilots. So you're hearing it directly transferred from the gear itself into the cockpit. Um, also, uh, that link should take you to the Stream Raiders, so that's active and ready. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that, that sound was actually recorded... I think um, was actually recorded in an A320. Uh, they've done a lot to try and get these to get this to be as realistic as possible. Want to hear about some Warsaw history? Absolutely. I do know a few things about Warsaw history. Um, for instance, in World War II, I think. Um, they wound up having this this method of, of protesting against the German occupation by putting up little statues or something that just pissed off the Nazis. Which I guess I just got cancelled for, you know, saying Nazis, but you know, Nazis were the bad guys, just so y'all know. Alright, so we are through ten thousand feet. Landing lights can come off. I'm just going to turn off our seatbelt signs. I don't see any particular reason why this is going to cause much turbulence. But yeah, I'd be happy to hear some Warsaw history. I've never been, but I would like to. Uh, I just don't know if I could pronounce that many Z's and J's in a, in, in a row to be able to to uh, visit Poland. And also, I am allergic to names that are more than 30 characters long. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry, I should, I should be very clear. Uh, I can say that because... I'm only repeating what a Polish friend of mine told me about Poland. But yeah, so, um, I'm Sodius Maximus, uh, is basically the, the moral of the story is, is that, uh, I'm a very salty person, uh, I get named Sodius Maximus, so then I'm trying to come up with a slogan for the Air Rack Attack Airline. And I'm like, you know what? Fly the salty skies. Uh, if you look at when I when I fly an X-plane, where I've made our own custom livery for our airplane, um, you'll see that underneath, like it's got air rack attack, and then fly the salty skies is the subtitle. I mean, they were Jewish symbols, right? And since the Nazis hated Jews, they got really offended and would kill the people who put those things out. Yes, and they still refused to stop because they were just stubborn as hell. Uh, okay, we do need anti-ice, so we're going to turn that on. What is our... our oh, okay, we're negative 13. Gotcha. That's why. But yeah, um... I've actually got heritage in that region. Uh, my grandmother's side was Polish. Uh, was actually a Jew in Poland. Well, not my... I don't know if my grandma was actually a Jew in Poland. I think her mother was. But they moved to the States. <clears throat> Where she married my grandpa, who is a uh, American soldier. my lighting just a tad. It's glaring in my eyes. All 
right, looks like we got about 16 minutes left on uh, Stream Raiders. Um, so what we are flying today is a real world flight. Uh, the, the pathing that we're using, it's a real world flight. Uh, we are not, however, flying in the correct livery. <laughs> I'm still using Air Canada. Um, I forget what airline normally flies this. But anyway, the city was built in 1200. Uh, it was the capital since 1413. And my favorite fact, Warsaw is the only city in the EU with a nature reserve? Really? That sounds so odd. Well, I guess, so you're not saying it's the only country, but the only city. So po po so other cities in the EU, or other countries in the EU have nature reserves. They're not just inside, the, they're just not inside the city. Is what you're saying? I was actually looking at maps of Poland before this flight. I do not feel comfortable in my ability to do this. So, because normally I try to do this with moving the camera around and I wind up swaying the plane. Uh, I don't know why it can't seem to understand that if I'm on the drone, don't turn using the same keys that I moved the drone with. So I'm just gonna see about these fixed cameras and see how they work. Apparently you can't help getting this garbage data that I didn't really want to show. Okay, so it's the only city that internally has one. That's cool. I was going to say, I thought the EU was pretty big on having nature reserves, but I guess that they don't have a problem with it as long as it's, you know, not inside the city. Yeah, this is definitely not the uh, livery that you would see this flown in. But this is a real world flight. I'm having to look back and forth because I, I had to pop out my camera controls so that you don't see it. <laughs> but that is really cool information. Um, I've never looked too deep into the history. So after X5, am I going to play 6 and 7? Unfortunately, yes. Um... I should be clear, I have never played 6 or 7, but I have been told bad things. So when I say unfortunately yes, I mean that mostly because uh, I've been told to worry about it. Um, not because I you know, already know I'm going to hate it. I, I only say that because I have been told I will. that wing flex um, and then I will continue on and play 8 um, go ahead and turn off anti guys there's no extra here um, and then once I finished all the way through X8 I think I want to uh, jump back and do OG Blue Bomb of which the only one I have ever played is Mega Man 2. Um, I had a cartridge of that. I may still have it around here somewhere. I've beaten X7 like four times. It's pretty good. I don't remember what I've been told about 7. I've been told 6 sucked really bad. And I will admit that 5 is not doing it for me. I don't like it. <laughs> It's not terrible, but having completion of the main 
mission be RNG based to the point where you don't have to actually play the game to win. Like, you can just skip doing all the stages, apparently. And if RNG loves you, you can still skip the first half of the game and just go straight to the Sigma stages. Um, you just have to get really lucky. Um, Classic series four and six are really good. I mean, told, so six, if I if I remember correctly, that's the one where they introduced uh, crouching, right? Um, I don't know about about four. I don't think I've ever heard anything about it. I loved two when I was playing it as a kid, but I will tell you this: I always got stuck in Heatman because of the goddamn uh, disappearing platforms, which is. I don't like that. It's difficult. Like, I, I don't think they planned out the pattern well. Like, they just made it kind of random in a way that they were trying to make it hard. Like, that's all I can imagine. Is that they were trying to make it hard. And they succeeded. They did, in fact, make it hard. But it was hard in a way that wasn't really fair, in my opinion. It's not what I meant to do, but okay. Three started slide, four. Three started slide, okay. Four made charge. Six made rush armors? Rush armor. Huh. Okay. Well, that's all going to be fun stuff for me to explore once I get to uh, OG Blue Bomber. That's going to be fun. Um, I do like kind of seeing that progression. The same way that, like, playing the X series, you kind of see the progression where in the first one you get, like, dash boots where you just get to dash. Um, and then the armor was kind of blah because it's just damage reduction. Yeah, you still, like, it's it's extremely high damage reduction. It's very nice to have. But you just kind of, um, you know, if, if you know the patterns, you don't get hit. If you don't get hit, you don't need health, right? Like, I've watched plenty of people do no-hit runs of Mega Man X. I mean... Obviously, they have to take damage from Vile, but um, other than that, they take no damage, and they still beat the game, no problem. Um, in which case, the armor did nothing. The helmet, which was the, about the most useless thing in the entire game, it literally it was only used to get the arm upgrade before zero dies. Um, that's, that's about the only use for it. Everything else you can get without it. Um, and then there's the, the Buster Upgrade, which... I mean, it's a Buster Upgrade. It just shoots a much more powerful shot. You get a little back blast. It's kind of cool. Um, then in X2, you see the progression of the ground dash to the air dash. Um... I still don't think that they really understood what to do with the helmet. Just gonna put that out there. Um, the body armor absorbed things that you could do a massive giga attack. It was the start of the giga attack. Um, you know, the next three you get the, the up dash. I hate how, uh, it takes until X7 for air dashing to be there in the first stage without armor. Well, that's not necessarily true. Like in um, in X5, you have the ability to use the fourth armor from the start, which allows you to use air dashing. Um, 
But even even then, still considering that, I would still say it's ridiculous that it takes until X5. And that's only if you select the fourth armor. If you select basic X, which is what I've been playing as, you don't have it. And you can't have anything. You get no upgrades until you get an entire armor set. That's some bullshit. That is ridiculous. I do like the fact that they introduced this idea of having multiple armor sets and kind of selecting which one you want to go to based on what's more useful for the situation. That I do like. But um, not being able to equip the individual parts is ridiculous. Yeah, when, you, when you're when you unarmored X, you can't air dash. Yeah, exactly. I mean, on the plus side, you can choose fourth armor X. I think it's a little cheap. That's why I decided to just play basic bitch X. But, I mean, Mega Man has a long-standing history of removing all of Mega Man's upgrades in every edition of the game. Like, every time you switch games, you lose all of your abilities, even just, like, mobility stuff. So, like, you know, Mega Man 2, I think, you start getting, like, item 1. And I think it's the thing that lets you climb walls, I think. There's item 1, 2, and 3. I can't remember which one's to which, but there's there's a rocket one. There's a, there's a climb the wall thing. There's a couple of things, but... Um, those would be extremely valuable in in later versions, especially right at the beginning of the game. But you don't have them. Because I guess Mega Man decided they weren't necessary anymore? Dr. Light took them away? I don't know. They never really explain it. And that sucks. That's just classic Metroidvania logic. Yeah, exactly. You lose all your fancy bits, so you have to reacquire them. Exactly. And that's why I actually appreciate the fact that, like, in X1 you didn't have even the dash, but like in later iterations you always start with at least a ground dash. You don't ever have to recollect that. It wasn't that formula. So I do appreciate that. Go ahead and widen up the main cheer on our radar. Ooh. Like, we got quite a ways to go. But, yeah, um... The same, like you said, it's Metroidvania stuff. It's the, it's the same thing with, with Metroid. You know, you lose the power bombs, the super missiles, the missiles, all that shit. You have to recollect it every time. Power ball, you know, you have to recollect all that stuff. It's nonsense. It's fucking dumb. I don't know why the various suit gets nerfed every time you change to a different game. But you know what? That's how them games roll. Um, we think Axel joining the team is good or bad. I have no idea. I've never gotten that far. Um, like, at this point, we are at the furthest I've ever played in the Mega Man series. So I've never... I, I had seen some small parts of 4 before I started streaming... I had seen small parts of 4, I had played about half of X3, I had beaten X1 and X2. I kind of thought uh, Metroid Prime did it pretty well because you actually get wrecked in the opening level. I mean, at least they explained it, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, they didn't... I understand why they needed to do it, it's, it's to avoid power creep, right? It's the same reason why shows oftentimes get canceled because they jump the shark. Because you can't control a power creep. So if you try and keep all the power from the original, by the time you're in two, three iterations, the powers are absolutely ridiculous and it's too much. Yeah, it's still enforced deleveling for game. And I don't get me wrong, I think that that deleveling is good for the, like. I think having the lack of a certain power for the gameplay is good for the gameplay because it would suck to not have a mobility mechanic to collect. 
It would suck to not have an armor mechanic to collect. It would suck to not have a helmet. Okay, that's a bad example. It is never valuable except for an X4. X4 is the only one where the helmet upgrade is worth any so far. But, um, so the, the, the helmet's a bad example, but having, you know, it would suck to, to already start with a multi-level charge like that, uh, where you could charge the, the, the boss weapons and everything. Like, you're starting at the end of the game, basically, and then you're just grinding out the, the bosses. Who wants to do that? And who wants to deal with the number creep of HP? Like, eventually you're going to have six health bars across the screen and nothing can tell you. Like, that's ridiculous. I wonder what the passengers are doing. Well, uh, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator, not X-Plane. They're actually doing nothing. Now, that said, uh, I, I don't think that the cabin even exists. But, in X-Plane... There is a uh, add-on called self-loading cargo that I've been looking at, and I would really, really like. But it's twenty bucks that I don't have, um, or rather, that I can't spend on that. Um, but self-loading cargo, you you will literally be able to select individual passengers, see their names how hungry they are, how thirsty they are. The, you'll have to turn on and off the plane's Wi-Fi. You have to determine when to send the drink cart and when to send uh, food. It seems like the captain is talking to himself and there's no co-pilot. Co so they're probably scared. I mean, they would be if they could hear me up here. The interior is a flat image of the interior pasted in behind the windows. Right, so if you go outside, it kind of looks like there's a... Um, an interior, but if you actually like move the camera back there, there's nothing. It's it's just untextured. Um, and then I want to cross over between MFS and the Sims, so you have to manage your passengers' lives. That's kind of what self-loading cargo is. Yeah, we're all broke deep down. Exactly. All right, so I'm gonna flip us over to Dream Raiders. And let's start this battle. It shouldn't be too bad. I mean, it's it's still very early on. But I do appreciate all the help that you guys have been giving. Especially you, Trashman. You have been, just been a workhorse in the... But yeah, this this is kind of a foregone conclusion at this point. These guys are much weaker than the other ones that were coming out. And so we're just going to steam more. Um, I don't think they ever have drunken parties, but you can scare the shit out of them. And they'll complain about you. Alright, so somebody's going to get one copy of the healer, and that goes to Trash Man. Okay, so now we have to do a boss. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. I really hope that we get through this. So break out your epics. If you have enough hero potions to, uh, to lay down an epic, I appreciate it. I'm going to throw a musketeer, so if you have uh, ranged units, put them around him, and they will get a buff. Otherwise, uh, we'll do our best not to die. Alright, so let's switch this back. Perfect. Alright, so I'm going to turn down weather brightness so I can actually see our progress a little better let's take a long look 
and see if we have a descent point. We do not. Now, if I remember correctly, RNAV 15, which is the, uh, the approach that we're doing, we're going to have a noise abatement procedure where we kind of got to zigzag a bit. Hopefully that'll be fun. I have no epics. Oh, well. <laughs> we'll do our best and see what happens. We'll just do our best. <laughs> if we die, we die. We start over again. No big deal. We'll be back here tomorrow. I will have to look up, though, more about the, uh, the locations of the armor upgrades. I would like for my run of X5 to be 100% um, related. It may not necessarily be 100%. Because I'm not sure if there's anything really worth calling 100% in it. But that'll... That'll be fun. I, I, I already know that I've made mistakes. Like, my X3 run is not 100%. It's 100% good. It's the good ending. Because um, in order to get 100% of everything, to get every item, you get the bad ending. Right, because X3, um, basically, there's a weird part where you need to uh, switch to zero to fight a second boss, which kicks his ass enough that he uh, that he gives X the Z saber. I got church the exact same time as the streams. Oof, I'm sorry, man. But. I mean, plus side is you will be able to see it as it releases on YouTube. Also, you can come back here anytime you want and look at the, the past broadcasts. I do have it keeping those because I don't... Speaking of, I don't play any uh, copyrighted music. I'm just realizing that my music was off. Um, so, because I don't do any of that. I don't play anything copyrighted. I don't use any copyrighted assets or anything like that. I don't mind leaving my past broadcasts up. So you can come and view the next day or an hour later uh, whenever you get out of church. Uh, or you can wait until they release on YouTube. Uh, which I really need to make a YouTube commitment. <laughs> I might just do that right now, actually. Um, let me shrink this down a bit. Alright, we're going to make a YouTube command. <laughs> because I have been putting that off. Because I don't... I, I was hoping to actually have, like, a YouTube custom URL before I went and did this. Unfortunately, I that's not going to come anytime soon. You can make it on Fridays. That's good. That does help. Uh, so we're going to add a command. Uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to give it a nice five minute.
Alright. That might be a wall of text, but... Uh, no, I do not want to close Streamlabs chat box. Alright, so that may be a little too much, but we'll see. It's a little much, but I think I can live with it for now. At least until we have a prettier lake. That's... I, I don't like doing things halfway. I don't like doing them imperfect. And right now, it's definitely imperfect. And that's kind of why I wanted to wait, but I realized that I can't just keep waiting. Looks so weird. Like, I'm not the only one seeing this, right? Those clouds look weird. They look different. They look like like they're actual firm. Scare those clouds. Yeah! Okay, so it's not just me. Like, I've got trypophobia, so, you know, irregular patterns like that freak me out. Um, but they definitely, they're definitely weird. They're not like regular clouds, which is, is weird because like, this is Microsoft Flight's claim to fame. Yeah, it looks like Air Broccoli. Okay, so it's not just me. Like, maybe I need to install something to make them look better. But that definitely, like, that looks like terrain. That looks like old... Uh, Microsoft Flight uh, uh, FSX terrain is what that looks like to me. I think they're okay. They just don't look wispy enough. Yeah, they, they, it doesn't have the see-through. I know, I know, I have issues. I'm already t 20 steps ahead of you, and I do every single one of those things as soon as a video comes out. Good, I appreciate that. Um, doing that shit, it, it helps a lot. Um, already I have seen an increase in the, uh, the impressions. So we are chipping away at the YouTube algorithm just by releasing on a regular basis, having people watch the videos, having them like it, comment, subscribe, all that stuff helps to beat the algorithm. Maybe they're European clouds. Don't mind them. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I, do, do you guys have hard clouds out there? I mean, honestly, that looks kind of like limestone. Like bleached limestone. It's so weird. I've never seen them do that before. No, you know what they look like? They look like a bunch of dandelion heads, like the dandelion fluff, not the not the yellow part, but later when they're seeding. That's what that looks like. It looks like the uh, the the dandelion fluff. Like it's just massive clouds of dandelion fluff. Sorry, I'm gonna stop freaking this out. <laughs> oh, there's a gnarly headwind. So we're probably going to have a, uh, a long flight today because we got a 55 knot headwind we're flying into. I'd probably say they're similar to storm clouds actually, but with the nice day color. Which is weird because they are supposed to be storm clouds. Like this is some wicked weather in the area. Can I tilt this? I can They just copied the, <laughs> copied and pasted the ground terrain and made it white. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of what it looks like. 
No, it's like I want to. I I, I want to scoop down close to the clouds and just watch all the uh, the the dandelion fluffs go whoosh and then contrail behind me. The Dracula weather, it's logic. <laughs> How long exactly I got school tomorrow? Okay, uh, well, let's see. If we were to continue on our current path, I'd say we'll probably be on the ground within an hour. We'll, we'll be on the ground probably in about 45, 55 minutes. That would be my guess. I mean, I do have to adjust a bit. Alright, so this is on 360 nautical miles um, range. So we're about 250 nautical miles, maybe 300 nautical miles from uh, Warsaw. But actually with that, uh, with that noise abatement procedure, we may be more like an hour, hour and 15. But if you've got to go to take care of school, by all means, please do. Um, I don't want to impact your real life. Cool, cool. As long as we're not, you know, impacting your life, we're good. Now, funny thing, uh, actually, last last week, I broke my uh, my rider pedals. Um, I still have them; they still work. But so basically, there's there's two pedals, right? But the pedals are each two pieces. Um, there's the toe portion and the heel portion, so that there's a locking pin that that allows you to slide it in and out, right? And my right one was already broken when I got it. Um, because Postmodernist in chat was kind enough to sell me theirs. And uh, I just had to get a piece of wooden dowel to insert as a fake locking pin. It obviously won't depress like the other locking pin would. Um, but it would at least keep the, the pedal rigid. Well, I broke the other one. So they're, they're kind of badly made. Let me see if I can find this part of it. There's the other part of the piece. There it is. So this is the locking pin. And essentially it's just this shitty little piece of plastic. Like this, right? And you depress it down. And then the, the pedal slides over it. And then once you get it to where you want it, there's one of three settings, you let it pop back up. Well, the problem is that means that all of this is the only thing that's holding the pedal in place. And if you press too hard on the pedal, it just shears the top of this locking pin off. It's just shitty plastic. Very likely you could, you could 3D print an easy fix for it if you want it. So I probably could, but the way I would want to do it would be on its side like this because otherwise if you do it like this the seam of the build layers will be in line with where it would shear so I don't think you would want to 3d print it um, and what I would probably do actually is just make it solid and and lose the ability to, to, to press it because I would rather have it be solid and actually hold on to the and that or just get a lathe and and just cut it just just make it metal right liquid resin would work better in that case I mean yeah anything molded is probably gonna work better molded or sculpted is probably gonna look work better okay where is top of the sense? Is it calculating me on top of the scent? We sell. No. It is not. And maybe something I'm not seeing gives me a top of the scent. 
No. Okay, so... <sighs> I've got to remember how this works. <laughs> so... I remember something about it being the number... So if we need to drop 33,000 feet, I think we want 11 minutes of descent time. Oh no. <laughs> I'm scared of that no HOTUS challenge. Oh, how much is left on it? I'm damn sure not contributing to it. <laughs> oh, it's 78%. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, man. Look, flying planes is fun for me. But I do totally realize that there's not a lot to do at Cruise. That's why I do things like Stream Raiders, right? It's that there's something going on, something to do. Um, and I think that instead of trying to think of this so much as a flight stream where we talk about just about anything, I think instead think of it as something where we talk about just about anything but we're flying in the background is a much better way to look at it. Uh, I would like to get to a point where I'm more professional as a pilot, as, as not a real pilot, but as a, um, as a sim pilot to where I can actually do all the procedures and, you know, to where I have more familiarity with the simulators, with the aircraft um, to where I can actually you know be talking about that um, but I'm not there yet and I think that this is a good middle ground it's a good place to start and it's something I have to keep forcing myself to deal with is that good place to start because there's a thousand things I want to do but I gotta start somewhere you know I can't throw hundreds of dollars at aircraft to get used to them so that I can review them for you. Um, I have to be able to justify that expense and that means that some, if not all of that money has to come from the stream in order for me to put it back into the stream. I can't just keep investing more and more and more because flight simulation is a very expensive hobby. I mean, this simulator by itself cost me $120. The HOTUS that I'm using cost me 90 when I bought it like five or six years ago. Um, these rudder pedals ran ran me, I think, like 50, 60 bucks. I don't remember. Um, but they they were going retail for like 200. And this is just a very basic setup. These are not like high quality peripherals. The, the rudder pedals are pretty good. Uh, aside the dumb locking pin. Uh, I can review that. That That's terrible. The, I can also review this Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotus X. That's what I'm flying with. Um, and it's absolutely been a workhorse for me. What other games do I play besides Flight and Mega Man? Okay, so I am a Final Fantasy fanatic. I, I play just about everything. Um, well... I prefer the older stuff. Um, so, like, Final Fantasy VI is my ideal Final Fantasy game. Seven was okay. Seven Remake was done fantastically, but the way that they broke it up kind of deflates the hype. So, uh, I think that they decide the way they decided to execute the Seven Remake was bad. Um, I play Final Fantasy XIV on a daily basis. Uh, so, that's my MMO that I play. Um, I play Deep Rock Galactic. I play some... I'm starting to get back into Seven Days to Die. Um, I play... Sea of Thieves. Um, I don't pay attention. I play enough. Uh, I play Minecraft. 
that was that was a lot of my old streams were Minecraft. Um, Secret of Mana, Legend of Mana, Trials, those things. Uh, Turbo Space Program, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, I've been getting into Airport CEO. I've done a lot of uh, American Truck and Euro Truck Simulator. I played some Among Us, but I don't really trust open lobbies anymore because it's been hacked. Uh, I did a significant session on Bloodstained. Um, let's see. I plan on doing Chrono Trigger at some point. Did Cross Code. I played Disgaea. Um, I only really like the second one that much. I got Factorio, but I'm not sure how good that is yet. Uh, streaming Final Fantasy. I have streamed Final Fantasy uh, 4, 6, and 7. Um, I have thought about 8. I like to do comparisons, right? Like between OG versions and remade versions. So like... Um, Final Fantasy 9 for PC versus on PlayStation, right? Um, although, I don't think I have a PlayStation that has it right now. Now, Final Fantasy 14, I don't think I plan on ever streaming that. There's just not enough to do at any given time to make a career out of it. I, I can't really make a series out of it because... I either have to progress through main story, which is going to be a lot of boring shit that people have trudged over before, um, or have to do high-end content, which, while I enjoy, I do get very competitive about. I don't think I could make a fun stream. Not in the tone that I want to. Um, it's also... It's a very mature game. Um, which is the nice way of saying what Postmodernist is saying now. Um, it's an old game. It's It's been out for like seven or eight years. I've been playing it for seven or eight years. Um, the content comes out slow. Don't get me wrong. I love it and I think that anybody who hasn't played it before that likes story-based MMOs should play it. Um, but I don't think it necessarily makes good stream material because it is so story based. How far are we? Okay, we're, we're still a good bit away. Um... Fallout New Vegas. Now, that's an old title, but that doesn't mean that it's bad for streaming. So, Fallout New Vegas has a lot of mods that they are fine with being streamed. Final Fantasy XIV is very, very unfriendly towards modders. Uh, they do not approve. They're not happy with it. Um, so... Um... Fallout New Vegas has a lot of mods. Um, also, just the skill of playing. The bar for the skill of playing is a little higher. Um, kind of like how Mega Man, there's a lot of skill involved in playing Mega Man. I'm not that skilled at it. I'm doing it because I have fun. Right? Um, but, like, the thing that I would caution you is turn off all the music if you're going to stream Fallout New Vegas. Because um, Bethesda has lost a lot of the uh, rights to the music that they used in the game and the sound effects. So if you stream it, you can be caught for DMCA and for copyright violations. Even on YouTube. So I would be careful. Uh, just make sure that you turn off the the, the music. 
Yeah, and there's there's a, there's a definitely a uh, there's a niche for that. Uh, you'll you'll definitely fight a little bit against the the way things are on Twitch. Um, you're gonna be kind of fighting against the algorithm a little bit, but I think you'll be doing good things with it. Uh, that's one of the things that I try to do with this stream is I try to um, use the stream to introduce people to things they may not have ever seen before. Because like like with the Mega Man X series, right? These are 20-year-old plus games. You know, uh, I think Mega Man X1 came out in like 92 or 95. Something like that. I think it was 92. Um, so you're talking about, you know, 27 year old games. And it's a style of game that I would like to see done again and done better. Uh, matter of fact, there are fan projects going on right now in the Mega Man universe that. I'm very, very excited for it. I'm very much following um, because it kind of shows Capcom how it should be done. How we wish it could be done. And it can be done. They're proving that it can be done and that it can be done and be fun as opposed to whatever the hell Capcom's been doing and whatever the fuck Mighty Number no. 9 was. I never knew about MFS, but look at me now. I love it. Yeah. I mean, so... The thing about simulators is... That I can't explain why I love them. I can't. I can't explain it. That makes no sense. I can't tell you why I love... Microsoft Flight. I can't tell you why I love Euro Truck Simulator. I was specifically speaking about Corrupted, yes. I love the look of Corrupted. Uh, I haven't been able... I haven't had much time to look up Maverick Wars. But MMX Corrupted looks fantastic. And it's everything that we ever wanted out of a Mega Man X game. But Capcom could never give us. You know, in, in, in the OG, like... In the in the SNES generation, you know, Mega Man X one, two, and three, they were dealing with the limitations of the console. I mean, you could already tell in Mega Man X intro stage alone, just walking the stage caused the game simulation rate to slow down because of all the shit going on on the screen. I love Stronghold and RTS because it just feels so damn fun. Stronghold. Not sure I know what you're talking about. Uh, and unless RTS means real-time strategy. But yeah, like these are things that I think people need to be reminded of. They need to be reminded that these games existed and how fun they can be and how much they're not actually limited by the system, right? Like Mega Man X was limited by the system in that it had so many things going on because of the technology by which they rendered it that it started to slow down because it was trying to, to provide too much too fast. But the gameplay itself was there. Um, okay, we're going to switch over and do this real quick. Alright. Start this battle. Let's see if we can beat a boss. I think we, I think we can win. I think we, I think we got this. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think we got this. Um, yep, there it goes. Great job, guys. Alright, looks like somebody's gonna get two flying rogues, which are a fantastic unit, by the way. Somebody's gonna get 50 gold. Everybody's gonna get eight. Come on, give, give me the ability to give them more. Anyway, Trash Man gets uh, 50 coins, and Carl Paz gets uh, two flying robes. 
And it looks like I get 175 gold. All right, let's look at our ETE. I know if I can do another one. 20 minutes, so it'll probably be closer to 50. Yeah, I can do it. This one. Start battle, and I'm going to put in a. I'm going to put it up there in the corner. All right, guys. Get that rolling and get back in the cockpit. Yeah, Mega Man X was still very, very good. Um,. I tried to place units, I don't even know how. It says I can't place units outside of my zone. Okay, so... I'm going to switch this back to strip. Let me switch this back. So you see how there's these, like, uh, green, greenish aqua colored blocks? Those are valid places to place units. So basically you just click and drag a unit and then you drag it onto one of these blocks and that's where you can place them. You just gotta make sure that you don't put it on someone else's unit. So like if you tried to put it there and there is some lag, so you can try and put it someplace and if it doesn't work and you see that somebody is there now, it's probably because someone else placed a unit there during that lag interim. I get that a lot. Um, but yeah, then you just place a unit, and then uh, once I tell it to go, it's all just AI-driven. It'll all just do its thing. Um, so that shouldn't... Uh, basically, you just place things down, and then the game plays itself uh, in a half an hour. You put things down every five minutes. Um, you should be able to place another unit. I think uh, most common units have a five-minute cool or a ten-minute cooldown. So you can't place them back to back. So like you couldn't place a warrior and then place a warrior and then place a warrior. You'd have to place a warrior, place a tank, place a warrior, place an archer, place a warrior. You couldn't just focus on one. Um, as you get higher level, uh, more rare uh, monster types or uh, unit types, some of them have much longer uh, differences like... Uh, I think I've got one that's got an hour cooldown. But, uh... But, yeah. I think it's fun. It's just something to do in the meantime while we're up here at Cruise. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Mega Man X was great despite the slowdown. Despite the simulation speed slowdown. Um, because it wasn't really reliant on any of that. The controls were tight. If you screwed up, like if something bad happened in Mega Man X, it's because you screwed it up. The only thing that I can think of that's difficult to deal with is the Haruka. Right? Like, there's a lot of people who had an issue with that where trying to enter the command, it makes you shoot the lemon and then the Haruken. In terms of quality, it goes X1, up with X2, up with X3, and then goes way down with X4. Okay, so are you talking about the gameplay or... Because I'm going to admit, I, I think that Mega Man X is a masterpiece that nothing in the X series has managed to surpass. I think that... Um, I think that X2 is second best fairly closely. I think X3 is slight, is about the, it's about on par with X2. Maybe a little better. Um, but it's very, very close X2 and X3. But then X4 just took a pickaxe to the entire series. How do I set up the currency? Uh, do you mean the, the pom-poms? So, those are channel points. And uh, let me see where I go to adjust those. I think I go to the settings, ch channel settings. And then you'll scroll down to... Uh, 
think that's where it is. Hold on. That's not it. Uh, honestly, the easiest way, I think, is to just click on the pom-poms. So click on your channel points and go to Manage Rewards. And it'll take you to the channel points, which is apparently in the Roles section. The Community tab. So if you go to the community tab and the last one is called channel points, you'll have to enable it. That's the first option. Then you uh, customize the display. That's the second one. And then the third one will be to control what all custom and standard uh, options you have there. Um, and you can, you can enable or disable standard ones or you can add new custom ones. Like the hydrate, sit up, stretch, and guide the raid. Those are all ones that I added myself. Uh, highlight the message, uh, choose an emote to unlock, send a message in sub only mode, and modify a single emote. Those are all um, default. Like those are default ones. There's another one that's default that's unlock a random sub emote, but I, I felt like that was dumb to have active considering the fact that it's worth. Uh, it, it costs 320 palms and it gives you a random sub emote I only have one emote and you can choose one to unlock for 250 so why make you pay more to to, to elect at random when it's you're still just going to get the one fantastic I'm glad that you uh, that you were able to get that placed yeah there you are yeah, you placed a paladin, or a tank. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad that that worked out for you. Um, more in terms of story. Okay, so in terms of story, I'd agree. Um, I, I think that... I think you nailed it with story, because in, in X, they were still kind of trying to figure out how X jived with the rest of... Um, with the rest of Mega Man... And then in X2, I think I'm going to go ahead and descend. Then in X2, they kind of were trying to do this torch passing thing. With X and Zero. At least I think that's what they were trying to do. Um, X2, they started to, to do this torch passing thing with Zero, um, uh, and, you know, getting all the Zero parts and everything. X3, uh, it was, it was kind of Zero's redemption arc and, and resurrection arc. Then X3, they figured out that they could do callbacks to previous Mega Mans, right? Like, they, they called back to, uh, to Boomer Quanger with Gravity Beetle, right? And then in X4, oh, oh my god, yeah. It's, oh my god, you couldn't have seen this coming. You showed us Sigma. He was grayed out. Yeah, he was in shades of gray, but we could still see all the details of his face. Like, I don't know how you expected that to stay under wraps. Or X3 kind of did the same thing with Vile. When Vile met with Doc, Dr. Doppelganger, or Dr. Doppler. But yeah, um, X4 was like, who the fuck is this, you know, commander, or, uh, was it commander, or colonel? Colonel, who the fuck is this colonel? Who the fuck is general? Why don't these colonels and generals have names? His sister has a name. Why are we doing this Romeo and Juliet with, with, with Colonel and his sister. Like, this doesn't make any sense. I always thought the Torch Man started passing with X3. Honestly, I think it started in X, but they killed him off to get you to love him, 
Then they used X2 to make you feel closer to him by you actually doing the work to resurrect him. And then X3 was where they were kind of starting to actually pass the torch by allowing you to play him. And then four, um, in four, you could just choose him and play as only him. So it was this slow progression into we're just playing zero now. Which makes sense because then after that happened, right? Um descending towards those clouds. I want to go ahead and get an anti-ice on. Um, because then after Mega Man X8, the next series was Mega Man Zero, where Zero is actually the hero. If I remember correctly. Dr. Double Gamer. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that would be. That was, that was just my brain heard Doppler and my brain said doppelganger I don't know <laughs> but yeah like <clears throat> they definitely were trying to push you away from, from Mega Man being the, the star of the show which is dumb because they had just introduced X like X is not the same as Mega Man he's not the same person But just aesthetically speaking, they designed him very much as the same person. Not from a story standpoint, but uh, realistically, we all know that this is the new Mega Man. The Romeo and Juliet thing was Zero and Iris. No, 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 no. No, I know they're siblings. The Romeo and Juliet thing is not as far as, insofar as romance. It was that Colonel forces himself to fight and thus die for no real reason, right? And then Iris fights Zero or X, it doesn't really matter, fights because Colonel died. And it's like, you were the one telling him he was fighting for no reason, begging him not to throw his life away. And then you blame the people who were were trying not to kill him, but didn't really weren't given much of a choice. So, you know, it's kind of that whole double suicide thing where he chose to end his life by fighting a fight that he knew he couldn't win. And then Iris blamed Zero for killing him when he wasn't given a choice. Like, it's let him die by fighting him and killing him, or let everyone die because the final weapon is being used on Earth. Like, that... That's a no-brainer, and Iris seemed to be the kind of person who didn't want all life to die. So, it doesn't really make sense... Oh, that's right. X fights double. X fights double. Oh my god, double. Oh. We didn't see that coming. <laughs> but double, double, was, double just came out of nowhere, and his name is too spot on. He's a double agent. Right? Like... Ah. I didn't like double. Um, I thought he looked cool. Like, he, he looked like a throwback to Dr. Light's robots, right? Where they kind of had that chubby, friendly look. But then, he's just a double agent, and he's his name is on the nose. And I'm just like, eh. All right. I got I to gotta look at my checklist to make sure we're on track. Uh, FCU altitude is set. Speed brake half is not required. Altimeter. What's our transition altitude? 500 feet. I do need to enter my destination data. Approach QNH is going to be 1008. Temperature is going to be minus 1.
Wind is 150 at 8 knots. Poland got to be difficult and different with uh, trans out. All right, there we go. That's all programmed in. He's almost like shell shaded now. How did we go from from sky broccoli to like? Whatever this is, it looks like ice cream. How do we go from sky broccoli to ice cream? I guess it's not just me, right? Uh, so if you just click on the channel points in your own... Oh, or, uh, it may not be... Okay, so... Yeah, exactly, right? Um, okay, so... Uh, I forgot, you don't have it turned on yet. So you'll have to go to um, to your dashboard and then go to the community tab and the last option in the community tab is channel points. Now it'll only be there if you're an affiliate. You have to at least be an affiliate. So I don't know if you've already got an affiliate. Uh, if not, then it won't work for you. What the fuck just happened? I don't know. What are we talking about? Now I have to wonder if the weird shading is an artifact of a VR update. That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I can see how some of this is actually shading because of the angle of the sun, maybe? But... Like, it looks cell shaded be honest. I don't know. It looks really bad. They, they did a lot of things. It, this used to look a lot better. Um, this is why I think X-Plane is much better. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, but you can use a similar system... Uh, using either Nightbot or Streamlabs Chatbot or something like that where uh, viewers can gain channel points uh, that way. Um, so you can use a bot to do that. But this is, this is a Twitch integrated thing for affiliates and partners. Um, the, what it does allow you to do is it allows people to be able to buy um, to buy emotes for free? It'll only get them get them for a day, but uh, but yeah, that's the, the the big power of the Twitch channel points. Uh, if you don't care about that, which obviously you can't because you can't have emotes, then as far as I know, everything you can do with um, well, maybe not highlight my message. You can't even put your your stream into follower or sub only mode, so that's not relevant. You don't have any emotes, so yeah, everything else that you can do with the ch channel points, I think you can manage through uh, Streamlabs chatbot. I think. All right, so now we're descending into the soup. So here's where you can start to see what I'm talking about with that. Uh, noise abatement procedure you see how we come up alongside the airport so this is the airport right here and we fly up parallel to it turn around and come back down because the idea is to get us low enough and slow enough that we're not um going to interfere too much with uh with people's homes like down here so we have to come around and land that way I guess your new goal is to come... I guess that is your new goal. Um, but yeah. Uh, becoming affiliate, the hardest thing you're going to fight, probably. The 
hardest thing you're going to fight is yourself. I say that for a reason. Um, there are a lot of people who see the checkpoints that they have to make it through in order to become an affiliate as the steps on the road, right? And pass them by any means necessary, right? But you can't do that. Um, you have to you have to withhold yourself from doing that. What is the runway? 362 feet. Okay. I don't know what the actual approach altitude is. So, the reason why I say you need to keep yourself from that pitfall is because there are a lot of people who will go, okay, I'm just going to get a bunch of friends to make a bunch of accounts and will all follow me to get that follower, uh, to get that follower level. I'll, you know, grab some people that, you know, that I know that have no interest in my actual stream, but I'll grab them and make them watch to get the three viewers requirement. <clears throat> and then it's just the number of hours that you have to stream and keep that requirement. And then you get affiliate. Yay. The problem is that then as an affiliate trying to become a partner you have to start relying on your metrics. And if you skew your metrics as a streamer working towards affiliate in order to get to affiliate faster without being in the position that they want you to be in as an affiliate, does that make sense? Then it'll make it harder for you to know what it is, um, it makes it harder for you to know what your actual metrics are. So you wind up trying to approach a partner by just shooting in the dark because you don't know how your channel is actually trending. Like, it'll look like your channel starts doing really, really bad at first because all the people that were there just to help you reach affiliate, they go away. They still count against you because they're still followers. But your follow to view rate drops significantly because you don't need them anymore. So they walk away and they go do other things. They were never actually interested in your content. They were just there to help you. Right? So all of a sudden it looks like your channel does terribly. There's a reason why most people who make affiliate and partner... They only make it for a few months before they quit or they take a massive break, their numbers dip, and then they never come back to it. Because once you do, it looks like your numbers drop because you did so much just to get there. And then you find out that, you know, you screwed it up and, and you screwed up your metrics and that's what's making it look bad. Um, so I did very little of that. Uh, I, I was not able to avoid it completely. I, I still succumbed in some cases. I had somebody raid me to get the last push. And so my metrics took a, took a nosedive. And it was really hard to keep my, my desire to keep going. But I did. Obviously, I'm still here. And I'm streaming three days a week. You know? But in the end, I had to start streaming for me. I couldn't keep chasing my metrics because my metrics looked off. And now I'm just trying to rebuild what I lost. Right? And it was also difficult because I did take a break around the holidays. I took a couple of weeks off. Um, to see what was going on with legislation and just because it's the holidays and I wanted to, you know, spend some time with myself, figure out a new trajectory for the channel, uh, take some time to work through my backlog of, uh, of material to get onto YouTube, uh, kind of streamline the back end of that process. I have, I have so many spreadsheets now. 
to help me keep track of everything, what phase it's in, what exactly I need to do. And I can start on it as soon as I cut streak. Um, I know what, what the status of every video I've got, starting with the ones just before, um, just before the holidays, just before I took my break. Uh, but that's all stuff that it took me time to develop, and I didn't want to be so stressed that I get on here and I'm like, okay, guys, we need to hurry up and get this done, and shit, we've got a headwind, I might just have to call the stream early, because I've got too much stuff going on. No. You know, I want to give you guys a quality stream if I'm going to stream at all, so I would rather take a time and step away from the stream, miss one, and come back with a better attitude, with more time and be more relaxed and be able to jive with you guys you know what i'm saying like that's my that's just my way of doing it. i had a weird thing where i wanted to be a bigger streamer where i wanted to get a bigger streamer to endorse me yeah <clears throat> so that's the thing collaborations is best done with people that are in your same strata if you aim for somebody too big it looks like shilling Nobody takes it seriously. They're not going to come and watch you, you know, on a regular basis. Unless you have a very similar vibe and they just get with that and they just enjoy that. Most of the time, you're just going to lose. You're just going to lose because your own people will see you shilling. Their community is going to see you shilling and nobody's going to enjoy it. Nobody wants it. Uh, landing lights can come on. Uh, I do not like that we are still in the soup. Turn on our seat belts. Okay, nav data can go to constraints. Alright, so we need to be at at least 3,000 feet, which is exactly what we're at. No, we're at 3,800, so we are at constraints right now. Because we need to be at 3,800 there. So that's our intercept altitude is 3,800. But yeah, you'll, you'll shoot yourself in your foot real fast trying to do that. Um... I, I definitely think you'd cheat yourself. Found you by MMX, and I was like, this guy's pretty cool. I appreciate that. You want to follow, but look at me now. I have no clue what to say. You know, honestly, you don't need to know what to say, right? Like... I don't always know what to say. Like, I, right now, I have no idea what to say. I'm just... I'm just vibing. I'm just doing what comes natural. And... For me right now, that's a conversation with you. Like... This is less a stream right now, and more just I'm having a conversation with you. You're just a cool person that I'm talking to, and that's how I'm building this stream, right? This is, this is not... This isn't a show so much as it is a community, right? I'm playing this with you guys. I'm talking with you guys. And that's the vibe. That's what I want. You know? I don't want to be the leader of this, you know, nation of Iraq attack. And, you know, that, that, no. Um, I'm just a part of this community too. Right? Like, y'all are. That's why, like, I let other people um, use stream announcements the same way I do. Like, I'm not any better. I'm just another chode, right? I'm just another chode swimming in the pond. So, like, if you're going live, go ahead and post it in my Discord. Like, go for it. We've got a lot of supportive people in that community. They're quiet, 
Don't get me wrong. <laughs> a lot of people in my community tend to be quiet, but, you know, they're good people and, and they want to help. So, um, you know, I would, I, I would post up that you're going live whenever you are. See if people want to drop by and see what's going on. All right, I think we've got enough time. We can we can watch this battle. <clears throat> Go ahead and get it started. This should this should be an easy win. <laughs> All right, who's sharpening their sword all loudly? Sharpening their sword. Oh, is it from the sound effect of it being ready? <clears throat> yeah, it looks like this is going to be an easy win. <laughs> Waiting for my grilled cheese to be ready, and it's been an hour. It's been an hour for grilled cheese? What happened? Did you lose your grilled cheese? Did it actually walk away? All right, looks like somebody's gonna get three rogues. Somebody else is gonna get 15 gold coins. Looks like Trash Man got the rogues and Fiona got the coins. Fantastic. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have enough time left to run another match. So I'm gonna go ahead and fade us back to the game. And I do call this a game uh, I'm not gonna call. Um, I'm not gonna call it a simulator because it's it's not. <laughs> yeah, gotta get that DPS in from that flag there. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna turn around and come back. Oh, I am. Very concerned about this. <laughs> I can't see nothing. Man, it seems like every time I fly in Europe, every time we come in with heavy cloud cover and I can't see nothing. All right, so we are under 230. I'm gonna go ahead and kick out spoilers, or not spoilers, uh, flaps. Flaps one. I have no clue what's taking it so long. It probably grew legs and just said, nope, I'm out of here. Yeah, what, the, like, is someone else making it? Or, or are you, like, what's going on? Like, did you, did you not turn on the pan? Well, what are you doing playing? It really does. Europe really does hate me. Um, it's just always cloud cover and I can see nothing. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my dome light. Not turn it up, turn it down. There you go. So I'm going to turn down. Oh, fuck. And turn down these brightnesses. Fuck. I'm turning them down too much. Can we adjust the peanut butter cups? We can adjust the peanut butter cups. Okay, we're getting a little bit of turbulence. It's okay. I do not like that self-test whenever I turn this back on. Like, I need my PFD. That's pretty important. 
All right, so I'm gonna turn on LS. Oh, does this not have an ILS? Wait, what is, this has to have an ILS. my ILS frequency. Oh, am I coming the one way that doesn't have ILS? Oh! <laughs> oh shit okay we're fine we're fine we're fine Thousand of three thousand feet constraint. Oh boy. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun. Okay, let's go ahead and do flaps two. We're on approach. This doesn't have the AP1 and 2 modeled. Ground spoilers armed. Drop landing gear. Set the auto brake to medium. Flaps 3. Flaps full. Do cabin check. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, I can see the ground. Shit. 
shallower descent a bit. There we are. Okay, I can see the runway. We're a bit high. We're fine. I don't know why it wants to put up these brackets. There we go. Shallow out. Throttle decided to have a fit. Oh, that was beautiful. Versus deployed. Eighty knots, still reversers. Oh, that was gorgeous. Okay, let's get off of this runway. That's an X, that's bad. All right, guys. Let's just park real quick and clean up. That was butter smooth. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's look at our live map. See where we're at. Oh, that was hello gorgeous. Okay, this is actually just about perfect, so I know where I need to go. Um, we can turn off our landing lights. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here. Normally, the co-pilot would be doing this. Okay. Landing lights retracted. Ground spoilers are disarmed. Engine mode is normal. Flaps are retracted. APU master can come on. That's not what I said. APU master can come on. All right. Terrain on ND is off. I can turn off my weather radar. Brake fan on, but I don't think that's modeled. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it is important to clean up after yourself. You are absolutely right. All right. So let's turn off this parking brake. Throttle up a bit to break away.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland. Welcome to Warsaw. I know that y'all need to be told that we've arrived. I mean, simply put, you may not have realized we touched the ground yet, but I promise you, we did. Uh, despite all of the turbulence and all of the, uh, the bullshit that we had to deal with, we actually arrived pretty reliably. So that was actually very fun. I enjoyed myself. Have you guys? I mean, I feel like that was a pretty interesting flight. As you can see, the co-pilot went Maverick. So yeah, pilot does everything. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. The co-pilot decided to uh, vacate the aircraft. Probably need to go a little bit further forward. Now let's let's check our work. Normally we would have an air marshal to show us. Okay. We need a few more feet. That's fine. Not cool. Yeah. More. There we go. That should be good. Let's double check. Oh, that is spot on. Oh, that's... That's a parking job we can be proud of, chat. Lots of broccoli and fog. Yeah, you're not wrong. All right. Parking brake parking brake pressure should be green. Which it's all good. Uh parking brake on, anti-ice off. Uh if you bleed can come on oh, I never started the APU so it can't come on quite yet uh, runway turn off lights are off taxi lights off um, wing lights can come off nose wheel lights are off nav and logo lights can come off Actually, I can switch over to external power here. Have I ever thought of doing collapse? Yes. Um, I'm not sure what that would look like here. Um, I've kicked around a few ideas. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of people in my strata in um, Light Sim. So somebody would have to break into that in, in, into that uh, niche really for me to be able to make that transition and 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 reach out to somebody because otherwise everybody that I know is much bigger than me and unfortunately like I said that doesn't really help much uh, to go after somebody much bigger but I would like to work with people more often. Um, that would be fun. Alright. APU bleed on. Engine 1 and 2 master off. Runway turn on. Flights are off. Lights are already off. <sighs> why do you do this to me? Why do, why do you do this to me? 
All right. Uh, seat belts off. Beacon lights off. Seat belts off. Fuel pumps off. Transponder to standby. I don't think I ever switched into mode C. Yeah, I did. I did. Totally off. McDo's to dim. I'm not going to worry about. Brake fan off. It's not modeled. Securing the aircraft. Park brake is on. Adiers can come off. Uh, exterior lights can all come off. That's not the direction I need to move you. That's all exterior lights off. Uh, APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit lights off. No smoking lights off. Battery one and two off. And that's us in the gate at Warsaw. Guys, thank you so much for being here. And look at that. <laughs> All that ice that was not there two minutes ago. <laughs> I have no idea why that just decided to start popping up. Um... <laughs> but at least we're already in. We're already off. Everything's already done. Unfortunately, um, Microsoft Flight Sim does not have replays yet. They need it. Badly. <clears throat> All right, for those of you watching on the YouTube, thank you so much for spending your time watching this VOD, this replay of everything that I did. Good news is Microsoft Flight may not have replays. YouTube does. Go ahead and jump back a few seconds, watch that landing a few times if you want to. Uh, I wish I could show you an, out an outside view of it, but uh, I do not trust myself to be able to land in an exterior view yet. So, uh, unfortunately, until Microsoft Flight gets those replays, there's just nothing I can do to give that to you. So, thank you so much for being here. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that usual shilling shit. I hate doing it, but you know what? I, I have to. Um, We're looking to get that 1,000 subscribers mark so that I can go ahead and um, get the, the, the custom YouTube URL. That's all I'm really interested in. Uh, it'd be great if this became something I could monetize, but right now I'm just after that URL so that I don't have to post something so ridiculously large. Thank you guys for spending your time. Have a wonderful evening, wonderful morning, wonderful day, wherever you happen to be, whatever it happens to be at the time that you watch this. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next time.